Welcome back. Okay, in this video, like I said at the end of the last one, we're going to model the clip out and then finish all the details. So we'll wrap this baby up. Um, we'll just start there and we'll work our way up and finalize details and uh, start laying in materials. And in the next video, we're going to wrap the whole project up by rendering it out. We're going to have a nice looking render. Now, uh, a note real quick. So if we go into edit mode on this chain, notice that it, it pops. And that's because when I initially added the curve, I incorrectly deleted the two middle points because a curve defaults. It starts with two endpoints and two uh, subdivisions in the middle. And that caused this behavior. There's no way to fix it that I'm aware of um, other than add a new curve and reattach all the modifiers to the new curve. And that would take time that I'm not going to waste on this video. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to hack a fix. And I'm going to just bring up a scale tool with a global uh, orientation there. And we're just going to scale it a little bit excluding the Z like this, and that'll give us a better shape for the chain and get rid of the squatch in both directions, you notice. Um, however, now if we go into edit mode, notice what we've done. So just be aware that that's not actually the right way to fix this, it's the lazy way, and that's what I'm gonna do here. So we'll apply the scale and it'll keep our change. Um, and now uh, everything was parented to this curve let's try to parent the mickey to the curve again and see what happens here if we move the curve down yeah we're good so let's just make some room move it down and everything will go with that curve as we move the curve and then don't forget we can um you know grab both those points in edit mode subdivide let's say two times and uh we can later start moving this and manipulating this curve to get the shape we want um, that's the idea here. So let's let's make this chain, and then we're going to move up the model and finalize all the details and micro bevels and so on. Um, there's definitely some work to do here detail-wise too. So we'll do that in a bit, but let's model this clip. So let's look at our reference, and we're just going to do something basic like this. I'm going to do it as quickly as possible. Also, let's hide our reference image because we have lost the file path to that image, but I don't need it anymore. <clears throat> um, I moved the files in, into a different folder so we could just easily, if you guys want to see what happens, you could just go here to the image, go into the, uh, the image panel here, and then under the image you could open and go find it. Um, and then you could even embed the image by saying pack and then uh, it would just stay in the blend file, which would be the smart thing to do. So next time that's what I'll do. And that's usually what I do for things like that, but I missed it. So enough talk, let's get to it. Uh, now in object mode, I'm going to add a mesh circle and we'll go with our tried and true 32 sides here. Uh, now it's off kilter because it's inheriting the cursor, uh, the cursor alignment, see if we go to world, it fixes that. I prefer leaving it on cursor though, because then you, you can get more precise placement. But to fix this, we'll just hit Alt-R to reset rotation, Alt-G to reset position, and scale will not have anything applied to it. Now we'll hit RX 90 to rotate it in the 90, or 90 degrees in the X, and then let's just snap to our front. Let's hit Shift-C to get that cursor behaving and back at the origin there, and scale this puppy way down, and bring it way down. And just, uh, We'll work on scale, finalizing the scale later, but we might as well just kind of see what we're doing now. We want it to be bigger than the chain by a certain amount. Um, let's do that, and then let's also squash it in. This isn't a perfect circle. You see it's like squashed a bit there, so we won't do anything too fancy, but we will squash it in like that. And now that I've done a lot of scaling in rotating in uh, object mode, I'm going to reset rotation and scale by hitting... Uh, Control A, which if my screencast keys modifier was ever going to stay enabled, it would have shown you that. So let's do that. Control A, rotation and scale. Good. All right. <clears throat> so now what's cool is what we'll do is we'll just, just in case, let's duplicate this cursor or this circle. You've seen me do this a few times. So we'll just hit Shift D and then right click to drop it in place and then hit H to hide it. And now we know it's circle O2. In fact, let's get better about naming stuff. We'll call this uh, clip for now and we'll probably need another piece to it now we'll go into vert mode here and i'm looking at it and we're just gonna we're not trying to be too crazy with this thing uh i need to be swift and that is probably the key with this so um why are we starting with just a circle well that's so we don't have to select through the verts every time and make sure we grab everything we're just gonna um this this modeling style in blender is really effective um because you don't need 
you know, you can just vert model everything out and it works out really well. So let's extrude that out. Let's hit E again and extrude it and give it kind of an angle and then move it in just the X with another extrusion. And now let's extrude it out again. And let's take a look whereabouts we want to land this thing. That looks good. So in this case, we're going to make sure we have our vert snapping on center and we're going to uh, hit G and then just hold control and snap it to that vert. Hit A two times. The first one deselects, the second one selects all, and then we'll X merge by distance, or in your case, it may be under the Alt M menu. And we have something that is probably looking okay. Move that in the X a little bit. This is pretty good. Um, now, I jumped the gun a little bit because, yeah, I definitely jumped the gun. So, <laughs> um, my mistake. Let's delete these verts. Actually, we could probably leave them. Let's. Um, Let's just separate them if we can. Can we hit V to tear them? No. We can hit Y, and we can hit Y again to split them off, and then we can delete these edges just to hang on to these edges here. Um, let's delete them, and now we have these verts floating still in the spot we want. Uh, so what we'll do now is um, I think we're ready to just start giving this some thickness. So in this case, let's go to edge mode, grab all the edges, and let's move them out away from the origin. We don't want to... We want to kind of leave the origin kind of where it is. And with all the edges, we're going to hit E and we're just going to extrude them back in the Y. Okay. And try to give this thing about roughly um, the thickness that it needs. And we'll, we'll just make sure that we're crossing that middle line by a bit. Or even we could, um, likewise, we could snap it to the grid. But just passing the midline will be fine when we hit it with a mirror modifier. So let's do this and then let's go ahead and grab these faces and I'll just hit L to link to that whole shell and we'll hit control F and we will solidify the faces and then we'll start dragging on this and we'll hold shift to slow it down a bit. Now, um, I wanna give it just a little extra thickness than what it has in, even in the reference cause it needs to be beefy enough to hold up to the detail, but that looks probably about right and we'll call that good. The next thing we'll do is we'll delete verts up to about the one we wanted to weld to. So I'm going to go into face mode, uh, not verts, but faces, uh, delete faces. And we will go ahead and grab this edge, that edge and E to extrude. And we could just cheese this by vert uh, welding. So grab those verts. In my case, I hit one, which is merged to last machine tools. Okay. Uh, we will grab this edge and do the same, just extrude it out and then just target weld it by hitting one. And then we can close this face off by hitting F. And now we can use hard ops to add the mirror modifier. And now we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and go into vert mode. Oh, whoops, not activating box cutter, alt Z been a few days and then we'll push this in, um, and give it about roughly the thickness we're looking for in it. Um, now let's add some auto smooth. We'll go 45 on it. That'll be, that'll suffice for now. Um, likewise, I don't need all of these edges. Um, also looks like we went to the wrong. Let's delete this face, delete that end gone cause it's messing things up. Let's come here and hit F and then grab here. And also I don't want, I want to see the Dagon mirror modifier. I don't want to be looking at this mess. It's really hard to look at for me. So let's click on that edit mode there and then E, bring it down like we did. Uh, the thing about it is now we have a bisecting line. So I can grab that vert, that vert one, and oh, nope, wrong way, my bad. One and one, now we're good. And that's better that's a very skinny triangle but we're going to fix that so grab that whole edge loop and hit f to close it off and then now let's go into edge mode grab these edges and hit c for your circle select and then just start to paint all these up and we're going to go ahead and control x to dissolve them uh, don't be afraid of end guns guys that's that's the best advice i can give you um, when really trying to dive into blender blender is very and i've said it before but here i am saying it again Blender is extremely good at handling n-gons, and uh, as such, you should use them and not fear them. So that's my spiel on that, and you'll probably hear it again. Let's fix that angle a little bit more there, something like that. We could measure the angle with the angle tool and all this, so on, etc. but we're not going to do that. All right, so uh, next thing we're going to do is I'll go ahead and bevel this off right now. 
Um, if we get in close, the image is really shitty, so you can't tell. And I'm just doing something that's loosely based on that design. But we're just going to... Uh, I don't have my hotkeys because I don't have Razor Synapse open. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to, in your case, right-click, my case, tab, and we're going to bevel the edge. And we'll scroll up for probably about that, to be honest with you. It's um, maybe a little bit more. We'll go pretty heavy on it and for that reason we'll give it a fifth segment just to really make sure that shape shows up because don't don't you know like I'm a game artist so don't forget like where this thing will be seen from that's probably more geometry than it needs but I also have a tendency to be stingy with the polygons and there's no reason to do that now our mirror modifier is already giving us trouble um, and I can tell you why that is so let's go before the bevel let's go into face mode and it's these back faces that are causing us trouble so um, we don't want these inside faces screwing with our bevel here. So let's go ahead and delete those. And don't worry about the shading. That's just the auto smooth. So now we'll go into here. We'll go back. Um, give it a 45. Thank you. And now we can grab that single edge, turn this back on so it looks better. And our cavity is what's causing that uh, hot line there. So anyway, you can turn that off. I keep hitting my hotkey, guys. Sorry, bevel edges, bevel it off, about like what we had. For some reason, this is just causing me hell, so I am going to just apply that thing once and for all, and we are going to bevel this thing if it's the last thing I do. All right, good talk. Again, let's go closer. Let's go right about there. So be it, and now since it's have been uh, applied, we're going to re put that mirror modifier back on there. It was being a complete asshole. No, no rhyme, no reason. All right, for that same reason, let's go ahead and bevel this off uh, as well. So let's give this a bevel and bevel edges. And we'll, so it's not going to behave at first, and that's fine. Um, what we're going to do is drop it by left clicking. Whoops, not two times, only once, because we need the dialogue. I probably could hit F9 to get that back, but. So what'll happen is we'll just drop it close and then we need to turn clamp overlap on. That way we can just slam it over. We can just go rah, and then just crank it up. It doesn't matter because it's going to stop as soon as those two verts touch. Um, and that's going to deal with that. And I think that's probably the right number of segments too. Now, just to give this some space, let's GG and edge slide that up a bit. Something like that. Um, just to give it some room. And let's even just be crazy and like hit G and just move it out subtle, subtle amount here to keep that kind of curve going. Yeah, just a subtle amount. And then also we need to merge these because if we select one, you see that they're on top of each other because of the clamp overlap, but it doesn't also weld them. So grab all the verts and merge by distance. And then you see that fixes that shading error we had. So next thing we'll do is make the groove. So let's select, um, Let's select up to here and start path selecting by control clicking along the path to get it running down. And let's just run it, let's just run it all the way down. Um, what I might do though is what I will do is I will draw, let's drop, I think, let's try not to drop the selection. We might have to though. Alt Z so we can see through it. Okay, bring up the knife and click once and then while you're in the modal, hit C to straighten it out and Z to cut through it all the way. And now let's hit spacebar to drop that down. And that's nice, that worked out well. And we still have our selection. So with that, we can grab that last poly there. Um, turn on the reason why is this. So we need to put in an edge loop. Um, sorry, I keep hitting the wrong key. Control R to put in an edge loop uh, close to the edge. Something like that is good. And now we're gonna grab these again. Sorry guys. I. I missed a loop there, missed a step. So we're gonna cruise down. This is how you can eat up time on stuff like this. Alt E, faces along normals. Uh, we need to drop it though and go back so we can Alt Z and see through. So we can see what we're doing. Alt E, extrude along normals. Get that tight, but not too much. Good old student loans. And let's see. Uh, that's probably fine. Cool, and let's go into vert mode now, and we're still in x-ray, and what we could do is 
these look okay. I mean, we could give this some more room. So we could like just hit G and literally just round it out a little bit here. Um, give these some more room to breathe these verts and, and keep that shape going kind of how we want. Whoops. Detail stuff, um, probably not necessary for the scope of this tutorial, but nonetheless, what I would do if it were just me working, you know, and not talking the whole time, just yapping. Um, this is looking not great. Give them just some room, just some room here. Yeah, something like that. Like this and just round it out and so they're not so clustered and uh, something like that. So now if we go into there, you can see what we got. Now we have some faces in the middle because uh, of what we were doing there. So let's let's go into face mode and Alt Z and then uh, make sure we have nothing selected. And then we're gonna B for box select and grab down the middle here. And we do indeed have faces all throughout that and all we need to do is simply delete those faces. That's it, Alt Z, all right. Um, and we have some bizarre verts too. So what I'm going to do is just grab these edges. The mirror modifier sometimes is almost more trouble than it's worth. Although it, when it works, it's like the best thing since sliced bread. So let's delete the edges, like straight up delete them and let's hit a, see, we have floating verts now hit a to grab everything and do a machine cleanup. The default key is three. I have it on four. Okay. Now they're gone. Thank you, machine cleanup. Thank you, machine tools. All right, uh, now the next thing is we need to actually define, uh, let's find out where we welded to. So we welded to about right here. So I actually grabbed the right face. And so we're gonna pass select all the way down, including this one. And we're gonna delete these faces as well. And likewise, we're going to grab these side faces here because we don't need them either. Um, because we're going to close this hole off momentarily. So grab the single edge, come over here, Alt Z, E to extrude it. We're following about the curve here. Uh, we're kind of following this curve a bit. And uh, you can even hit GG and slide this guy now and hold Alt and then you can't see anything because of the guide and grab it. So I'm just going to G, move it down about where it's just above that line and matching that curve. And then now what we can do is go into vert mode and alt a machine align bottom and uh we're good there now alt z grab these edges go ahead and hit f to just face them up and then grab these loops now that the hole is closed and hit f to face that up with an end gun as well and so now we have this clip shape here um with a groove for it to go into um, which is cool so that's our first goal so now let's start working on the second piece that articulates here um for that maybe we'll bring back that circle we had originally and we'll we'll use that and that was the reason for the duplicate so let's grab these and we're going to move this over i'm sure but we'll grab let's grab up to there and grab all that and we'll delete these verts and then edit mode and move it over in edit mode in the x i'm thinking because we're gonna we're gonna figure this out guys you don't worry about it you just don't worry Okay, let's GG and edge slide that down a bit. So, it, well, I don't know. Let's let's see what happens. All right, cool. So we want to extrude another vert straight over in the X, and then we're gonna cross about the middle there, somewhere in the middle maybe, and then we're gonna extrude it down. Um, actually, screw that noise. Let's go G and bring it all the way over because this isn't gonna be seen. We don't need to get too crazy with this stuff. And then now we'll extrude straight down and then leave a little room maybe and extrude straight over uh, but we won't do that yet so we'll undo because we need to thicken this thing i don't want to make the same mistake that i made before although i'm sure i will uh, let's just thicken it up now so we'll go into vert mode uh, we also need to grab all the edges or the verts and then move them over till they're inside the groove just inside the groove something like that and then let's go ahead and uh, invert or edge mode. Actually, I'm just not used to using verts for extrusion because I'm a you know Maya guy and Moto guy and all that. So let's extrude it over past the midline. And we don't have any interior faces yet to speak of, but we will. So let's wait 
before we do any mirror modifier shenanigans again. And uh, let's go ahead and grab all the faces and let's uh, solidify them up. And let's go into X-ray so we can kind of see what we're doing. So um, Control F and solidify faces and, um, you know, bring it in. This is the interior clip part. So I don't think it has to be as chunky. And we can move it over too. So I think it'll be about as chunky, but not quite. So we'll go 0 0.005 because I know we did. 0 0.007 last time. So now drop them, pick up everything with A, and then move it over in the X till it kind of kind of lines up fairly well there. And now we will grab some verts and GG to edge slide them down to where it's like touching, where it would hit pretty much right there. Okay, so let's do that. And then th the next thing is like let's isolate this piece now. Um, local view which will be uh, backslash or slash on the numpad a default vanilla blender but i use the machine focus function um, again we don't know about where we're gonna go with this yet so i'm gonna let's leave it let's leave it be but we could delete these because we know we don't need that stuff we'll just delete that there i guess kind of doesn't really matter yet the next thing that does matter though is let's get our faces and go into alt Z, nothing B box select and just delete the outer the outer faces which will <laughs> which will be our interior faces as soon as I do this. So let's alt or sorry, my my case shift V and do put the hops mirror on it. And now what we can do is most likely this is not gonna be enough room for what we want, so we need to give it some room. Um, grab this edge loop and then Let's look in our Alt Z and let's GG and edge slide it down till it's about you know equal or so, and then we can while we're still in this mode grab that edge and that edge. It doesn't look like it, but you see down here we have two edges, and then we're gonna do what we did above and we're gonna bevel the edges and clamp overlap is still on, which is nice, and so you just pull it all the way over till it's round, grab all the verts, merge by distance. Good stuff. Um, yeah, it's looking okay. We can we can work on it more later. Um, now I was a little hasty on this, as I thought I might be. Um, I was a bit hasty, so we're gonna want to bring that clip, that thumb clip thing, down all the way to about here. To be honest with you, so let's grab one, two, three, and just in the uh, well, it was to E, and then in the Y, and just slam them over, and then the mirror modifier will weld them with the merge threshold there, so that, that's gonna be fine. Um, the only thing it doesn't do is it's not going to, let me just make sure they're all merged. We might have something, we might have a renegade here. Yeah, we do. So let's grab that one, grab that one, that one, that one. Turn off the mirror, there it is. So grab those guys and then we'll G and the Y and then we'll snap them to that point and now it was a mess I made, and now you see how I can clean it up very quickly. Okay, so now we're gonna make this thumb clip thing. So let's hit E and jump out just by hitting E and kind of give it give it this kind of action. Let's not go too far, but come up at an angle and then E again and come down. And now that is gonna be too big, I think, if we zoom out. But let's let's give it something like this. All right, now what we can do is we can grab that edge and we're gonna bevel that as well. So we bevel it to give it that curve, something like this. Just instead of a six nine, let's give it, was it zero seven? No, it was seven, that's good. And it has a, a readable curve to it. And now with these faces selected, let's grab them all the way out to here. You guessed it, solidify faces, pull it up. And something like that, but we're not done yet because we can make this look a little cooler even yet. Let's with these faces selected, let's go ahead and uh, get our 3D cursor in the mix. So. Uh, shift right click and hold the right click and then hold control to, to vert snap it and it's going to place our cursor there um, now what we can do is we can grab 
the shear tool and then tell the shear tool to be at the location of the cursor. And now we can just shear it down like this and give it this um, that tapering look. I want to make sure it's exaggerated enough to read so it looks like it gets skinnier out on the way, which is cool. Um, that we don't want to do. We do want that. And now what we can do also is we could just, if we wanted to, we could hit G and move it over slightly just to give it that pointiness, uh, which is a little bit overkill. So now what we'll do is we'll isolate this guy and we'll start closing this thing up um, and figuring out how this needs to look. Um, yeah, let's isolate it. So first, first things first, let's grab it. And this, these faces will be a problem when we solidified. Uh, when it comes to the mirror modifier, that face will be a problem. Let's turn our mirror back on now. And uh, now that we've gotten rid of that, and let's E to extrude the edge down just straight. And what we can, we can go ahead and um, just machine align it down. And then F to face that up. And then we'll go ahead and delete these polygons. Delete the faces. And you guessed it. Fill it up with an end gun. Just fill her up, Joe. You know, fill her up. End gun city. No worries about it. Uh, we're just not even worried about it. We're just we're, we're renegades here. We're rogues. It's rogue squadron. End gun style. I had a lot of coffee today, guys. All right, and we're gonna move it over. And uh, I'll be damned if we don't have something going on here, guys. You know, we got. I'll tell you what we got going on. We got rogue edges. Speaking of Rogue Squadron, and let's move this over just to be inside of it, just because we're because we're nitpicky dudes and and lords and ladies, as it were. Um, that's I don't even actually I don't want that. This uh, let's move that over too. We're gonna you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna machine align these guys and we're gonna line them up straight. Let's move it over just a little bit more because I'm gonna go ahead and bevel this off shortly, um, if not immediately. And we're going to do stuff. So let's grab all of these faces. And I'm going to hit Shift N because I want to recalculate. And then let's also give it a 45 auto smooth. Um, that will need to be done again. There you go. So if we if we get rid of our wireframe now and we bring back cavities, you can see we've got uh, kind of an interesting looking clip thing happening that's somewhat like what you're seeing in the reference. Um, fairly close. Now let's go in and let's start beveling stuff off. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to make this thing look like it's you know, uh, coming in, coming into this guy. So we're going to go ahead and let's just look through it as we do and bevel it off. Now, why am I not using the bevel modifier for this? Well, this isn't where the bevel modifier really shines, to be honest with you, uh, where it shines is on, uh, holding like incremental detail on edges and stuff. Um, I guess it's fine where it is. And, uh, I don't know. It's not, I mean, you could like try to force use of it, uh, but the thing is this, let me, this is a great opportunity to show you this add-on. So I have uh, an add-on called mesh, uh, mesh Machine as well, and I highly recommend it. So if I didn't say like the width of this bevel, yeah, if I wanted to like widen that out, that's one way to do it. I could Mesh Machine, Refuse, R to reverse the direction, W to change the width, and uh, do whatever I want to do. So anyways, Mesh Machine's cool, guys. Um, so if you want to destructively bevel and you need a non-destructive way to do it, there you go. There, there's your. That's a bread and butter right there. Now uh, this needs a bevel. So for that reason, this edge I put is useless. And let's bevel it off. Also, let's make sure we don't have any scale that's going to mess with our bevels. Let's go ahead and less on that. Something like this is good. And of course, this looks terrible. So let's go into edge mode and circle select all that and just dissolve it. And we're not going to horse with it. We're just not even going to lose sleep over it, guys. Like we, we have bigger fish to fry here, without a doubt. Let's do these bevels separately. Um, we're not going to bevel them that much. I'm going to give them one more segment. And we're going to do, like, we want this to be a pretty tight look. And now I might be able to just shift R and repeat that. But of course, it's not what I'm going for. So let's do it and tighten it up just a bit. Something like that will be fine. And auto smooth isn't catching those angles. So we're good on that. 
things are looking good. Now, if I wanted, this is where the bevel modifier would come into play. Like if I would use hard ops and I would go, okay, I have my shape where I want it. And now what I want is this micro bevel on the corner. Um, that's where hard ops would be of use. But for this design, I think the piece is too small and that's unnecessary geometry that we don't need. So this is looking okay. Let's give it a bevel in here too. For that, let's look through so we can make sure we're getting the angle we want. Let's make it look like it's, you know, like this piece is um needs to rotate. So we'll actually give this the old shift R because that's so buried inside um, that that won't matter. So it just needs to look like it can like swivel. I mean, this wouldn't work, you know, but like nobody's ever going to see in there. Like it would be something like this or, you know, I don't know, but I don't want to use that many segments. So um, we'll just give it a a little bevel there, a little bevel action just to round it off and for whatever reason anyone ever sees down into there. And now it looks like it could rotate and you know when you press this thumb clip down this part could come out um, and rotate out. So it could like, you know, not from the cursor but if, okay, like from like there, you know, it would like do this kind of thing and then clip. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and put the cursor there and we will add a cylinder so let's go um, shift a add cylinder and we'll add a cylinder now this one's not going to be this will be 16 sides should be good and we're going to scale it way down like crazy okay this is going to be like the hinge they don't can't really see what's going on there but we're going to add kind of a hinge feature here um, now what i think i'll do is to make sure it's centered we're going to move cursor there grab this and move it to the cursor and then that we know it's like centered along this axis right here. Drop it right about there. That looks like a good point where it might pivot from. And then let's see what's happening here. Um, move it out. Whoops. Move it out. Sorry. GY. Move it out to about where the origins. Just inside. Something like that. And now what we can do is cursor to selected. Go into edit mode. Grab this back face. And we can go selection, it'll be this one, to cursor offset. And then we'll delete this face. We don't need it anymore. Alt-Z. Um, also, auto smooth, probably 45 will do the job. And let's push this in like that. And now we will give it a little pin. There's a number of ways to do this. We'll do it the quick and easy and dirty way. Um, not really sure what I did last time. Probably bring it in. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just we'll push it in. And we're not going to bake a normal map or anything from this. So we don't, we'll just push it straight in. And then we can inset it again a bit, push it out further than it was, I think. Might look nice. And then now we'll bevel this off too. And just make sure you have, oops, we'll go into edge mode. And we'll go to here. And just make sure you have a bevel profile of 0.5 and it'll be round enough um, to sell it. We'll go pretty far. Like we could go all the way, actually. That might be nice. Clamp overlap on, go all the way. That'll really round it out. Now make sure you weld, you merge it up and merge your verts there. And we have kind of a pin thing um, kind of happening here. This, I don't know. That that looks very good though. Let's push this in a bit. Let's grab that face, control plus on the numpad a few times, and let's uh let's go ahead and scale it just in the not in the Y. So S, shift Y, and we'll give it close that gap a bit more. I don't think that looked very good, to be honest. Just needs a small gap in there. And that'll do it. So this is all good to go. Uh, the next thing we really need to do is we need to hit it with some material. So you can go to your material panel, um, add the light metal material to this. And uh, that's good. Looking good. Cool. And this one as well. Light metal. Okay. All right. So moving on. Now, what I think we can do is uh, this doesn't look nearly as good as kind of the one that I had done before. Let's move these out. So let's do, let's grab Alt Z, grab those. Let's 
grab our cursor again and hold control and snap it there. And let's use our shear tool again, because I don't love the look. It's not capturing that look really for me. So grab the shear and we have some room. So grab shear and shear it out this way. See, see what that's doing. It's looking kind of crappy, but yeah, I think we just didn't go up far enough. So let's go all the way up to this vert and get our cursor there and shear it out towards sticking out maybe, almost sticking out. Something like that. Looks a little better. We could even likewise shear this out too. Just move our cursor to that spot and then grab that shear tool and just shear it over. Something like that. That's looking a bit better to me. Um, still kind of looks kind of cheesy, but what are you going to do? So you'll notice now we have this kind of gap that's going to catch some AO in here and show like that this is actually like has some function to it and we didn't just, you know, cram something together that doesn't really like logically make any sense. Um, the trick here is going to be we're going to have to push these verts. If we want to extrude this down further, um, we're going to have to push these verts out, but Honestly, I don't think we need to do that. Now that little pin detail is not gonna read. So let's grab all of those, get off our shear tool, shift C to reset the cursor just in case. And we'll make sure that we're set back to medium point here. And then we'll S shift Y and we'll scale that guy out more. So it's big enough to read. Um, otherwise it won't. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's look at it in comparison scale wise. Um, it's looking a little big, but we can easily take care of that. We'll just scale it. We'll scale it all. We'll scale all of it. And let's do it uniformly. So we're just gonna hit S and scale it down. Let's scale it down until it hits. Um, too much. So there it hits, let's scale it to there and see what that does for it. Yeah, that's better. And likewise, we need to now reset the scale. So just rotation and scale, it's fine. All right, cool. So now what we can do is we, let's just combine all this stuff. So let's grab those two and then grab that and then control J and now it's gonna, you know, all be combined into one mesh and it's gonna be uh, mirrored, which is great. And everything's just jiving, okay? Cause it inherits the modifier and the, and um, the origin of the other objects. So now we just need to make an attachment point for it. So for that, let's do something down here. So um, I'm not sure what I want to do about this. Let's uh, let's do something crazy. Let's uh, no, let's do something easy. So let's just grab our cursor and uh, no, not scale. Let's shift S and then whoops, shift S cursor to selected. Drop it there. Um, Let's do, no, let's do something okay. Here, let's grab, so let's grab a cylinder. And I'm gonna do a 16 sided cylinder. We're gonna scale way, 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 way down, right? Give it a 45 auto smooth, grab this face, uh, and then it's, it's shift S to cursor offset. And now we've, we've hit that up properly. However, it's not lined up correctly. So what we can do is go into our end panel and then in the item reset it uh, in the Y, so just zero out the Y value there in the, for the location. And then now what we'll do is we will just scale, we'll S shift Z to scale it out like that and give it something, I think we did it too much, shift Z, bring it back, something like that. And now we can scale it in in the Y and squash it in like this. And let's go ahead and Bring it out a little bit more. Bring this face up and give it somewhere to kind of attach onto. Um, truth be told, we could uh, simply up, whoops, G, move it up just a little so it intersects like this. That's too much. G, Z, move it up just a hair. And now if we wanted to, we could Grab this, grab that, control plus, and Boolean union that together. And it might just work. Okay, hide the cutter. 
and it looks like it's working. Let's look at our wireframe. That's going to be fine. We could connect. Whoops. Um, we can't connect because of the Boolean. We'll mirror after the Boolean. Also, we're going to uh, leave that closed. So we could just do that and then leave it for the sake of this uh, this project. I think that's going to look just fine. We could give it some bevels or taper this or do whatever, but we're not going to do those things. So let's bring the cutter back, though. And let's duplicate the cutter. So Shift D, drop it. And then we'll hit M and we'll move it up into the out of the cutters collection, um, which is our Boolean cutter collection here. We'll hide the original cutter. Thing about it is, um, if we move it down, see it's in wireframe shading here. So, you know, what you would do about that is you'd go in here and you go to like viewport display, display as wire. Uh, but I'm going to just use machine tools because it has it right here. And we're just going to say textured, which is the default. Like if I look at this object, and we go and look at what it is, it's uh, textured. There's other ways to shade it, obviously. Let's also go into our material panel and just hit it with the light metal. All right, cool. So now what this will be is this is going to be the attachment. So let's um, bring it up where, until there's just the tiniest gap, something like that. Grab this, bring this down, make it chunky. Um, and this is like where it would spin, like this part would spin around. So um, I haven't really thought through how I wanted to do this part yet, but let's just, again, let's keep it easy. That's, I think the name of the game here is easy mode. So let's just penetrate whatever we're gonna do here. And for that, we'll uh, grab this and go ahead and send the cursor to where it is. So it's right in the middle of that piece. And then uh, let's do an object mode, go shift A. Now I have extra, um, I have the extra objects add-on that's in, in, installed in Blender turned on. So for that reason, I could add just a single vert object, which is really helpful. But for you guys, it'll be a little more complicated. So let's go ahead and just add a plane and then go into edit mode. And it'll have all of them, all the four verts of the plane selected. And then you can go ahead and do merge. And so in my case, I'm going to say um, shift one will merge them all to the center. And now what we have is a single vert. So if I move that off, you can see I have a single vertex and it's selected. So let's go into X-ray, pull it down a little bit and let's uh, start modeling out the shape. So we'll, we'll move it over actually until uh, we'll get it to where it's penetrating. So move it over, stick it in and just start modeling it out. So let's go out a little bit, just a bit like there. We're not going to do this rounded shape. We're not going to horse with that. And E, bring it down a bit like that. I don't know. We can play with the shape and then come to the center. And in fact, let's go ahead and grab this thing and shift. Oh, well, first, what I should do is reset rotation scale just to make sure. And then shift V and then mirror it across. And then we'll go into this mode and we'll just slam it over. And the clipping attribute here, here is what's going to weld that at the, the middle. So now we need to look at the shape. Now, it's the chain's going to go in here. We could actually even move um, that. <laughs> Couldn't get it. Uh, move up the chain and just kind of take a look at how much room we need. And we don't need that much room. So let's grab these verts, move them over, something like that. And uh, that might be okay. Something like that. And then, to be honest with you, could probably be up like this a bit more. I don't think that really was much. Let's go ahead and bevel off these corners. So bevel verts. How round do we want you? Let's we're gonna get we're gonna do these separate because we need different bevel variations on that. So let's round that off like that, like quite a bit. And then let's round this off less. One less segment. I'm just scroll willing to get the segments that I want. Let's do it till that guy like pretty much pokes its head in there. Um, cool. Now, as we've done before, I'm not going to move it in object mode because I want the origin to stay put. So I'll move it over and let's see about how thick this thing needs to be. Not very. Then E, extrude it over past the midline and go into object mode. Uh, oh, we have a mirror on it, but we need a, a double axis mirror. So let's turn on the Y there, bisect it and flip it. And let's give it an auto smooth uh, 45. Now the faces are all crazy. 
So select them all and shift N to recalculate them. Um, and that's going to be fine because we're going to thicken them up right about now. So let's do that. Let's hit A, grab all the faces. They should be all going the same way. Let's make sure our back, yeah, our back face callings on. So that's why they're transparent. Grab them all. You guessed it. We're going to thicken them using solidify face. I think we'll go the other way. We will, but we're going to fix that here in a second. Now we're going to make that pretty thick because it's going to be skinnier than it is thick. Um, to be honest with you, maybe even there. We'll go all the way to there. And then now again, we'll grab all the faces and then shift N should fix them. And just to make sure we don't have any weirdness, hit A and then run a machine cleanup. And uh, looks like we don't have, we do have, we have faces in the middle naturally because of the solidify. So that's where order of operations will get you. So let's make sure and delete those interfaces and now we're good. Okay, cool stuff. So now what I want to do is grab all the faces again and uh, move them down just a smidge, just like there and uh, like there. That's fine. And that thickness looks okay. We're going to leave that thickness and we're going to add it. We can't collapse that because this has a two-way mirror going on so this will be a separate object so we'll just leave it a set we could collapse everything and then join everything up but we're not we're going to leave things live for this tutorial as much as possible but what we will do is parent these shapes we need to parent this and this let's make sure this and this and control p parent to object so now anytime this clip moves To object. Anytime this clip moves, everything. Oh, um, <laughs> that's the boolean. So let's grab that bool shape and that, and parent the bool shape to it as well. I'm gonna hide that. I I need to. The new version of Hard Ops has a parenting, like where it'll auto parent booleans and stuff. I need to be using that. All right, cool. So. This keychain is rotated. We could turn, which way is this facing? Yeah, the bracket's facing the right way. I'm not sure how I nailed it before on my initial attempts. Let's let's parent this. Let's parent, on second thought, let's parent all of this stuff to the curb as we have everything else parented to it, including, let's see, the Boolean cutter should be fine because that's parented. Yeah, the Boolean's fine, so now Everything's parented to this. Um, RZ, we should rotate, but we can now rotate this guy. So RZ90. And same with this. RZ90. RZ90. Could have done them all at once, but I did not do that. And let's just reset rotation and scale. And we'll not do that because it's messing up our mirror modifiers that are live. And we'll now rotate this RZ90. Okay, so, whoops, RZ90. All right, cool. Or in this case, we want it going the other way. So let's undo that RZ negative 90. Fun, fun. Uh, Mickey, we'll, we'll pose the chain and we'll get everything looking nice for the render and we won't worry about that just yet. So anyways, our clip is done. I knew that clip was gonna take us a while, guys. Sorry, but... Um, you know, I was trying to make it as quick as possible while still fiddling with it as little as possible. But let's move on to the rest of the details here. There's not much left to do. So the big one for this is let's reacquaint ourselves with what's happening here. Now we need to, let's isolate this piece. Um, we don't need these faces in the middle. If it'll let us grab them, it won't because we have a solidify. So that's going to be our first issue. Uh, we're going to just collapse the solidify. All right, because we're okay with what's happening here. Um, before I bevel anything too, let's use the trick we already used because I think what we need is, this is too fat. Um, it needs to taper in a bit as it comes out. So I'm glad that we went with this fatness because now we can taper it and uh, we're going to do that using the technique that I showed earlier with the, um, sorry, with the shear tool. So first thing we'll do is let's get it the place that we want it. So we're gonna, let's just put it here. Let's go invert mode. Now you could just, you know, right click and snap it there. You could say cursor selected or however you wanna do. 
and then grab only this face, this this face here, and we can go into like a top view or a bottom view rather, and now grab our uh, grab our shear tool. We'll do a global orientation. Bring it down like that. That's probably just about what I had. So now let's undo local. And so now the problem is that we have lost our Boolean because now if you have modifier list, you can uh, add on here the free one. You can it, It'll let you unhide and unhide your uh, Boolean objects. Also, likewise, you could use hard ops. And under mod scroll, you can hold just left mouse and then scroll. And if I had more Booleans, it would scroll through them. Now if I left click, it'll select it. So what we need to do here is move this guy back in. That's all that, that happened here. And so this guy got to go in. Not sure how deep he was before, but I feel like he was just to where like this bolt piece was underneath the surface, kind of like that. And that should be fine. Um, so now that we've tapered that guy in, let's start working on things. Uh, now it's come time to go ahead and collapse that Boolean in anyway. So let's go ahead and collapse it in by applying it. And we can now you know, hide the bool shape or get rid of it or whatever. Let's go ahead and grab that face, control plus a few times and add another material slot. And in that material slot, we're gonna add the light metal material. And then with those faces selected, we're gonna assign them. Okay, so now we've, that's not a detail I'm seeing in any reference. It's just, I feel like when you get opportunities to add more material breakups, it definitely helps like kind of tie the whole piece together. So that's a artistic decision that I've made. Um, now, we have a weird connection here, so I'm going to, it's not gonna let me dissolve it yet, so let's make an edge there by hitting two with both verts selected, that's a machine function. Machine tools now, we will probably force us to connect that too. And now here in a second, we're gonna have an issue with this. Um, because what I really wanna do is dissolve it, it won't let me, so I've gotta put one here too. Now I should be able to dissolve that edge. This edge doesn't need to be here either, but it's gonna, again, make me anchor it somewhere else that's better, and we can do something like that. All right, cool. So, uh, I kinda wanna give it like this fat bevel on the outside. So, what we can do for that is we'll just use hard ops. You guys slap a, a bevel modifier on there if you don't have hard ops. Also, we can delete this interface now. These interfaces here, we don't need them by any means, they're embedded in the mesh. So let's bring up a uh, hard ops bevel and I'm going to, our auto smooth is what's problematic here, but let's go ahead and just give it something like that and then drop it and now we can work on this. Um, let's hit it with that and we need one segment and our auto smooth isn't helping us here yet because we need a micro bevel to, to work on the rest. Um, and what I'm going to do here, I really need to control where this is happening. So for that reason, I'm going to grab, I'm going to change this to a weight method. So in the modifier, change it to weight, grab all these faces. Um, cause we only want it to be the, the outer ones and then hit two. And then we can deselect this cause we don't, well, I mean, let's see what it looks like on that one. We can, it'll probably look okay on that. And then go ahead and control E and edge bevel weight and then just pull it all the way over to one. And now let's take a look. Okay, so that's giving us kind of what we're looking for here. Now, we'll add a weighted normals shortly. It's definitely too much down here, so we need to take it off this loop. So go here. Um, again, you can grab the, the weight tool and hit negative one, or you can go in your end panel with edges selected. You can turn your mean bevel weight down to zero and you see that that goes away. All right, so now we need a smaller bevel to help with this edge and that's gonna catch everywhere else. So for this reason, we'll do an angle method bevel. So we're gonna add another bevel modifier. And to do that, I'm gonna go back into hard ops. You could just add one and leave it on angle. And we're going to add, if I hover over the tooltip, it'll say control add new bevel modifier angle 30. Um, let's see what 30 gives us. So I'm gonna hold control and we're gonna scale it until it's just something like this. And now we can start looking at, at, at it and see what it's doing. Um, now our, we need to take our auto smooth up. We'll just take it all the way up to 60. And now things are looking pretty good. Um, if I turn off the cavity, which is making things look a little strange, things are looking pretty good. Um, it's a little doughy down in here, but it's catching nicely everywhere else. 
doesn't look like the edges that we anchored with here are de redirecting the bevel too badly. It's looking pretty good. I expected more trouble than this, to be honest with you. There's a little shading artifact there, but I bet you as soon as we hit this with a weighted normal and we crank it up to 100, keep sharp face influence as always, and we toggle this on and off. It's hard to see because of the yellow, but it's fixing our, uh, our shading right there. And now we could always go in and adjust on this a small bevel, the number of segments. If we want less segments in this case, I'm going to leave it. Um, although I don't know if, whoops, if that's really doing anything for us, it might, yeah, in the corners it is. Again, this is like a hero weapon. So a few polygons isn't going to hurt anyone. Um, the profile 0.7 is good for this one, but now hard ops always gives you a 0.7 and we want a 0.5 on that one on that first one. So let's see angle, catching all the 30s. Everything looks good. So 30s seem to do the trick and I'm not even minding how it looks in here. Now you could exclude these. Um, there's ways to do it. Oh yeah, we're overshooting down here. To be honest with you, the other thing we could do just to call this a day that would make this really easy without having to walk you guys through messing with this thing is let's just grab all of these faces there. Turn off your bevel modifier so you can see it too. So we just want that, and then I honestly just hit P to separate selection and just make it its own thing. And now it's just not gonna be an issue. Um, however, we will isolate this and we'll close this hole. So for that reason, I'm gonna delete those faces and then just grab it, hit F to fill it in, and uh, then unisolate, call this like bolt, whatever, and then parent it, control P to the object. And then let's go ahead and Grab this edge loop and then G Y actually let's G G go out and then hold alt and then slide it in. So we follow that angle and now it's penetrating into the mesh and we don't have, when we turn our bevel back on any crud happening inside. Okay. Super cool. I might even actually nudge this down just a smidgen. Whoa. It's very sensitive. So for that reason, let's go back into hard ops and just, hit bevel and if you just left click it'll allow you to I'll right click to drop it because I need to hold shift so let's just left click and now I hold shift and it's going to allow me in the modal to adjust my last bevel modifier I will just nudge it down just a smidge and now we have a nice little micro bevel the modals let you just move your mouse in the viewport and they're really nice for this sort of thing um, that's looking pretty cool so anyways good details uh, now, likewise, we could hit this with some bevel too if we wanted. Um, I say, why not? So let's isolate it. Go ahead and look. Do we have any modifiers that can conflict? No. We'll go into hard ops and I'll turn on my cavity just so I can see the edges. Hard ops, left click for bevel and just give it just enough. Something like that. And let's look at our wireframe. Turn off the cavity again because it always looks crappy. And that looks good. Now let's make sure we don't have a scale value on it. That's doing what I want. And hitting where I want and our auto smooth. Let's, okay, it's at 60, good, that's prime. Cool, so now the last step here is to add a weighted normals. Now I'm not gonna do it manually again because I have a script that I wrote. Well, I didn't write it, but it, it yeah, kind of did. And notice that it, it adds a weighted normal um, and it puts it at 100 and adds face influence, which there's no harm in having here, even though we haven't weighted any faces. So let's come out. That's looking nice and higher res. Probably a little bit overkill, but that's fine. This we've already done some beveling on, so we've already done what we wanted to do with that. And then let's see. I think we're going to leave this one chiseled and sharp. Um, we can always check that in the render and see if, if we like that or if we want to add a little micro bevel to that guy as well. Um, that's looking pretty good. So I think we're going to call it here. Um, if we want to add any micro bevels anywhere, maybe to Mickey, we could do that. Let's go ahead and hold shift. Give him something like that. And let's, let's make him bigger. And it's the solidify modifier that's messing us up. So let's go ahead and uh, actually we don't, let's just use the thickness of the solidifier, solidify to help us. So something like that, like that. And let's move him out to, to about the middle. Um, if we bring it in wireframe, we can see pretty well what's happening. 
where that chain edge hits. And it's fine. Something like that. Okay. And now he needs a way to uh, normals as well, because you can see. And also, let's move the mirror down below the bevel after the solidify, and then we'll add a way to normals, and that'll correct that, everything else, uh, the shading. Okay. Cool. I mean, we could do the same here, but I think it's a waste. So, sweet. Well, you know what? Honestly, guys, I think we're going to call that good. We're, we've wrapped up the model here. We've, we were all set. I think we can set up a really appealing render and finish off our materials in the next video.